Hey, and welcome back everybody. Another exciting episode here at Blue Glow Electronics. Uh, probably a short video today, but I thought I'd show you something I'm working on. Um, it's been sitting around since about June or so, maybe a little before. But this is a uh, Bottlehead Stereo More amplifier. It's, a, uh, it's an amplifier they no longer make. Um, it basically can, these two outputs of tubes, um, you can either use run 45 type 45 tubes or 2A3 tubes, which, as we know, both of those are uh, amazing single-ended uh, amplifier tubes. So they now make this amplifier. I think it's only 2A3 or only 45. Um, it doesn't. You can't swap it over like you could on this one They're using different um, output transformers in the newer ones. But at any rate, I bought kind of got this thing online uh, off of one of the popular. Um, forums, I won't mention which one, but um, I was going to show you how sometimes things look great online and then when you end up with them things aren't all as they appear, but let's dive in first uh, just a little bit to when the individual shipped this thing to me, they basically uh, left the amp sitting in the wooden chassis like this um, loose, in other words it wasn't bolted down or anything, and so as I zoom in here a little bit, you can see that uh, the bottom line, that big old chunk's out right here, um, all along the back here, great big dents in the edges there. Um, so basically, uh, you know, they ruined what was a, a beautiful uh, you know, cabinet. Uh, these are what come came with the uh, bottle heads originally. And uh, so, you know, I realized I wouldn't be able to use this because even if I tried to sand some of that out, you would see when you drop the plate in here and it's sitting up against the edge here like this, you can see a big gap really easily. So uh, this wooden base is pretty much toast. Uh, but let me flip this thing over and show you a little more. Hey, real quick before I flip it over, one thing I wanted to show you. I'm not real fond that the... That they put these together with kind of just the, uh, you can see here, kind of ugly stickers just stuck on here. You still got the uh, the glue, um, enamel um, glue on these things. You can see a great big uh, spot right here. So I'm going to take these transformers off. And as you can see, I've already taken out screws on this one. I'm going to take these transformers off and uh, paint the end bells here so they look nice and black uh, and kind of match this. The, you know, whoever I got this from had went to the uh, the effort of having this end bell powder coated, but uh, kind of left these two here um, pretty darn ugly, if you ask me. So uh, we're going to do something about that. Let me flip it over and show you the other side. Okay, from a few feet away, it all looks good. Um, but let's let's dig in a little closer here. Um, first thing I'm doing is I've got a uh, I'm mapping out these uh, transformers on the top and where they feed through. One wire kind of comes over here. One feeds into the high voltage here on this power supply board, um, and then the other ends up coming down here underneath to a kind of a grounding lug. Um, but as I got into this thing, I got to noticing like um, the solder joints here, like. Um, where this thing connects. Look at that. I mean, I'm just wiggling it and it's ready to break loose. Um, similarly, this one over here is not much better. Then I came back here to the input selector and I found this wire hanging loose here. Um, I found right here. Look at this. This is the, uh, the ground wire for number one input, which was never even soldered <laughs> to, the, uh, to the lug. And as I go through, you know, it's just some really, really, really ugly soldering going on here. I think the iron that the individual was using wasn't hot enough to actually heat up these posts and uh, and do do any kind of diligence of uh, soldering. And I think they're somewhat of an amateur. That's one of the challenges with these bottlehead kits. Um, they're designed for the amateur and designed for people to learn. But, um, you know, it, sometimes it's worth... Um, <coughs> before you diving into a, a new project like this, maybe spending uh, you know, uh, a week or two or three just soldering different stuff and practicing. Soldering is one of those skills that just kind of, um, the more you do, the better you get at it. So anyway, we're gonna once over this whole thing, got my solder and iron, the uh, Handy Heco. Heated up 750 degrees, we're gonna resolder every joint on this thing, just because I do not trust what is here, to be honest. 
and then we're going to um, go about uh, getting uh, unsoldering these wires and taking the top transformers off taking them outside painting the end bells and, uh, and we'll kind of take it from there I'll show you as we go I don't know if you not sure if you can see this or not but check this out not even soldered just twisted around there and uh, dab a solder on the side I think it was an attempt but all I had to do was pull that um, and that went to the output transformer. Um, no wonder this individual sold this thing. Um, you know, I think they thought they were getting a, uh, a really solid amplifier that would sound great, but I could see why they would part with it, because it wouldn't sound great in the um, shape that it's in. I really like the way Bottlehead did this. You know, you've kind of got this choke down here on the bottom. I'm not sure what size, probably a... Uh, um, output transformer and up here you got a choke um, probably a uh, 10, 15, 20 Henry choke here on the bottom and then they actually put the uh, the output transformers on the other side of the board here which is away from the power transformer and these chokes so uh, no no chance of uh, kind of um, you know stray magnetic uh, fields getting across into the output transformer I actually like that design but uh, you can see I'm just taking the screws loose here to kind of let these things drop down and uh, be able to take it out then. Okay, as you can see, still got the, uh, still working on a, uh, it's got 222 waiting on a part or two so I can finish it up. But you can see I've got it the, uh, the uh, chokes off now. The output transformers are just sitting here, sitting here a little bit loose. And um, got the chokes sitting here now. Um, always um, bag up your parts, um, seal them up, and uh, they'll be there when you need them to put the thing back together. Uses a bunch of little rubber grommets in between the, uh, the transformers and the metal plate on both sides. If you'll notice here, I drew a nice little picture of where these wires went, uh, just for my reference. And on top of doing that, I always... Let's come over here for a minute. I always take pictures. So, uh... You can see here, I've, uh, and I use paint, uh, Microsoft Paint, so I brought it up and I uh, drew a circle there, drew a circle there, drew a circle here, I actually took two pictures, one of each side. Uh, last thing you ever want to do is take something apart and not be able to get it back together. So let's take these chokes outside and uh, get or to the shop and get, the, uh, get them ground down a little bit, uh, get them looking good, and then uh, get some paint on them. All right, let me show you what I'm doing here. I've just basically gotten a screwdriver, a flat screwdriver like this, and I've gotten underneath the uh, the little bend over tabs on the bottom, and I've just lifted them up just slightly, not too much at all, just kind of like that right there, as you can see here. And I did it kind of on both sides here. And then what I did was I took my screwdriver and I got it down here on the end, and I kind of popped it loose, as you can see. Um, just enough. I don't want to bend these tabs way... Up because um, then when you paint them and you bend them back down the paint's likely to crack on the corner so try to mostly leave them in place I'm going to bend these apart just enough to then slide the uh, kind of the E um, the uh, pieces of E metal and the uh, the top piece and the bob as well as the bobbin and uh, then we can just work with this metal and not mess with the uh, actual transformer itself and as you can see here, it takes a little bit of wiggling, but these things will finally pop loose. You can see where it has some, a little bit of the uh, lacquer glue or whatnot that was holding this, these, uh, the, the top bar to kind of the E piece here. Um, but we can, we can fix that when we put it back together. It's no big deal. Um, and uh, it's looking good, actually. Let's get this one off. All right, you can see here we're just using a regular old uh, shop grinder here. Of a wheel on one side, and uh, this is mounted up on a nice stand about four feet up in the air here. Uh, excuse my mess, but uh, this was uh, an unload I had from a flea market farm here recently. A uh, nice Scott amp here, a couple tube testers, a couple of Ariacs. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we're gonna keep running on this thing, but you can see here, starting to get. Um, Starting to get the sticker off, starting to get the uh, the varnish or the lacquer off of this thing, and uh, we'll keep grinding away on it though. Okay, 
that took about a whole maybe 10 minutes total. I uh, ground all the, the edges really smooth just using the wire wheel on the uh, bench grinder. Same thing on this uh, all the way around. Had to get down here on there was some lacquer or varnish down on these uh, the tabs here. But now we've got these things uh, ready to paint at this point. So uh, I'm going to get the paint out and get at it. Okay, we're out back behind the workshop. My trusty old trash can that I keep out here that I flip upside down to paint on. Um, laid down something to keep these things uh, steady and flat. And I'm using a Krylon Supermax gloss. It uh, kind of includes the primer and, uh, and everything all in one. And I've uh, sh shook it up real good, so we're going to get to painting. Hey, Jack, good morning. Yeah, he's wanting to help me paint some. Anyway, any rate, number one tip I've learned of painting with a uh, spray can, um, go lightly. Just put a, uh, oh, and Waffles, our little Winnie dog, came out to see me. Um, you go lightly. Um, just a light brush coating on everything. You know, as you can see here, I didn't even get all of it covered in the first coat. You can see, uh, see lots of the silver still shining through. Uh, put a light coat on it, let it sit for about 30 minutes to an hour. Come back, put another light coat on it, uh, another hour, um, let that let that kind of dry. Do that over a three or four hour period, uh, a couple coats on it, and you'll be in good shape then. You can now see why I sprayed it on the piece of cardboard. So I could carry it inside and sit it down, because as you can see out there earlier, it's been raining off and on for about a week here. And I didn't want these just sitting outside and, uh, and it raining, so I brought them in here and set them on the shop bench. We'll let these dry while we go do some soldering on this uh, on this thing. Let's go see if we can find some more bad solder joints. I'm sure there's more there. So I've been soldering away on this thing and I found a couple things that I really don't like. You can see right here, like these power resistors, apparently um, it's somewhere they cut the leads and, and ran them around and then re-soldered them back here so the wires are not even intact. The same on this one. Kind of the same on this little resistor. It comes off of here, comes up, and it, it's soldered right here to another piece of wire that extends it down to here. So it's been snipped in the middle. So a lot of places in this amp where the uh, connections are just made by two wires being held in place by solder. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know how much of a fan I am of solder holding things in place. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to fix some of those. This is an interesting one I found right here, if you can see. The solder here that goes to the center lug of this uh, this potentiometer, which is the hum pot. Check this out. It goes all the way down here, and then it it drips like um, they just kept running solder. And it goes all the way down here, and, and it is actually touching the uh, the board here, <laughs> the uh, metal base. So uh, that's a definite short out at some point if it isn't already. Um, so you know just. Hope you're learning something here. You know, you see something online that looks pretty nice, but uh, you you, know, you get it home and uh, might not be all it was cracked up to be, and uh, might need going back through um, again. I love these bottlehead kits. I probably built 20 or 30, 40 of them over my in my time, and uh, you know, I think they're great kits. I think they're great starter units to teach people how to do stuff, um, but. Um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, what I'd call uh, less than amateur here, uh, more definitely amateur. Anyway, we're going to keep keep going back on this thing and uh, soldering. I've made it down through here thus far, across here, and I'm working my way back up. One thing, one thing to note here. Um, you know, I know it probably sounds like I'm beating up on the amateurs. I'm really not. I think everybody should uh, dive in and learn to do some stuff like this. Um, even if you are a beginner or just starting. Where I'm having the problem with this amp, the part that's really griping me, is uh, this thing was advertised on a very common audio, where audio heads uh, and, and uh, kind of people that work on this stuff hang out, but it was advertised as a fully functioning, well-built, um, nice uh, amplifier, but um, I'm seeing way too many things here 
to lead me to believe that this was a really nice, well-built, without issues amplifier. Honestly, when I got it, I never powered it on because it had been beating around in that wooden chassis. And I immediately noticed these wires up here loose that had not even been really soldered good. Look at that. <laughs> I'm wondering how channel 1 ever even worked. Um, both the ground wire and the, uh, the center lead here aren't connected. But, you know, that's the part that's griping me the most is it is, uh, you know, paid a full price for it, kind of uh, assuming it was what they said it was. And uh, clearly it's uh, a little something less than that. I mean, if you'd have bought this thing online thinking it was ready to go, got a home, you would have certainly had issues either right out of the get-go or, you know, sooner or later, and then you'd have had to take it to somebody like me to uh, pay to repair it. And, you know, you could have ended up with, um, well, let me think, painting these transformer bells, resoldering this whole thing, getting a new wooden base built. You're probably in the $200, $250 range. That wooden base I had built for this thing you'll see here in a little bit cost me well over $100, so... Um, that's what I'm. Uh, that's where my beef's at. And as you can see, I've got these end connections on here much, much better now. Got these resoldered. Um, I've, I've had to take this board off. Apparently, they lost a screw along the way. Three of them are one size. One of them's another. The the uh, bolt head they've used uh, that mounts to these studs. But I've got to get all these underneath here and back in here as well. Make sure these are good because. They're all kind of soldered, but not really. I honestly think some of it could have been the uh, temperature of the iron the person was using might not have been hot enough. Because actually the ones that are on the PC board, they actually did a pretty good job on the PC board. So uh, that lends me to believe that the iron wasn't hot enough. The other thing is, as I'm soldering, and I don't know if you can see these little specks right here that, that just kind of break off. They're all over the board now. Um, what those are, they're little beads of flux that come out of the center of my rosin core solder. Um, you can kind of see them like down in here. Um, they, they, they pop out as you're soldering and kind of get all over the board here. Well, I don't know whether somebody went through and took the time to clean all these off because you had kind of to pop them. They kind of stick like glue. But there wasn't a single rosin drop anywhere on this board anywhere, which leads me to believe maybe the solder they used wasn't all that great. Um, anyway, it was either that or uh, the, the iron wasn't hot enough, or a combination of both, but or technique. Um, but we're going to get back at it here. Okay, UL alert. Um, underwriters Laboratory would not be happy with this. This is the actual power supply. If you'll notice, this is the feed coming right off of this, the wall socket. This is where your power uh, 120 volt out, uh, AC outlet comes in, right? Connects right here. Um, check this out. If you get down and look right here, see the big solder glob that is dripped down from this top connection all the way down here and it's like <laughs> maybe a few microns away from touching this other lead which would have caused an instant short in the power transformer um, really bad stuff there so uh, just giving you more examples of what I'm finding as I get into this thing okay well the uh, covers turned out nice and uh, they're just about the right color with a little bit of a, uh, you know, kind of a, not really satin, but a textured cover, um, filling to them. And I've got here the cores. And um, if you'll notice on the cores originally, you can kind of see it here as I turn it. But they use a uh, kind of a lacquer varnish on these things, um, mainly to keep the, um, the plates here. Uh, lamination plates, laminates, from uh, vibrating um, as the uh, kind of magnetic flux uh, induces around them. But what we're going to do is uh, use just a little bit of uh, just polyurethane. Kind of here you can see on the top of this it had a little bit, but the, the goal here was really to uh, kind of seal the, uh, the E core here from the I core on the, uh, on the transformer laminations. And, um, and also to keep this part from vibrating inside of this. So I'm just going to use a little brush here. Um, 
toothbrush just a little bit across the top and on each side here um, so that when I snap these back around it it has a little bit of something to uh, kind of glue it, seal it to the, uh, to the metal so there's no chance of vibration uh, taking place between those two. And then we'll be ready to put these back in the amp. Alright, you can see here I've got them all clamped down. Got to let that uh, polyurethane dry for a little while. So we'll go back and check on the other, the uh, the app itself. Okay, we're here here a week later, <laughs> and I was just not happy with how this transformer turned out. The painting it ended up with a little pit or two on the top, um, and a little bit of uh, orange peel over here on one side. And so what I've done is I've uh, I basically sanded this thing back down. Used uh, combination of the wire wheel we showed you earlier, a Dremel here, and some sandpaper, but got this thing all sanded down at this point. Unfortunately I've already epoxied this thing on here really good, so I think I'm going to end up just uh, kind of taping up the end bells here really good, taping up the wires um, with some uh, you know, blue painters tape as such, and um, I'm going to end up spraying that thing again, and uh, this one turned out pretty good, but I'll see if it matches. If it doesn't, I'll uh, I'll do this one as well this weekend. But I just want to get these things right. And we changed our mind. We went ahead and stripped both of them back down because um, I decided I'm going to go with a uh, flatter paint. I think this glossy paint on this metal and uh, is uh, and it's been the middle of winter here is not helping me out a lot. So. Um, Gonna go with a flatter paint. I actually match the metal transformer a little better. So get these things both taped up well and uh, paint them up, and uh, hopefully get this thing put back together this weekend for you. Okay, early Sunday morning here. These things turned out absolutely beautiful. Gonna match the uh, the power transformer quite well, and uh, we're gonna go get this thing put together. Okay, as you can see, this morning I got the new trend or the freshly painted transformers mounted on the bottom and uh, brought them up through here. I had to put the rubber grommets on each side and then the nuts and up here on the top you actually have uh, some uh, little tabs that uh, you have to solder to for ground connections. I put those in and then I had to feed the three wires through the red, the black, and the blue here and the blue came down here and soldered to this point the red came up here and soldered to the high voltage and the black ended up going down here to the second spade lug here and the exact same thing for the other side here so at this point we've got it all soldered back together um, I found one ground wire here I've got left to solder uh, as soon as I get that done I'm gonna flip it over and uh, we'll get this thing powered up and see how it sounds all right we've basically got the transformers on now and uh, fix that ground wire. As you can see these uh, transformers match up quite well. Kind of a, uh, a satinish kind of finish uh, with a little bit of roughness to it. Uh, match up well with the original. One thing I don't like um, yet about it, and I always fix this when I work on these things, is if you'll notice they fused uh, little silver screws that came with the bottle head kit here all over this thing and uh, similarly the long ones here for mounting the the transformers are these silver pan head screws and uh, what I like to do instead um, I buy these they're little um, kind of rounded head um, hex screws then that um, you replace all these little screws with and you would be surprised at what this uh, what that will do to the whole look of this thing similarly here these long um, black hex head uh, kind of nut screws that will replace these transformer covers here. I'll, uh, I'm going to do that, but uh, what happened was I got ready to put these transformers together and it, what it required was a um, 6 30 seconds um, thread screw, but it, it needed a half inch long and I didn't have any of those. I've got a pretty good assortment, but I didn't have any a half inch long, so I've ordered some of those. So. When those come in here in a week or so, I'm going to uh, take the time to pull these back out, put in the uh, put in the black ones, and uh, I'll do the same all the way around here with the rest of this amp. It just gives it a really clean look when you do that. Um, I may even think about some uh, 
some little chicken heads or something here on this thing, on these things, uh, knobs to give it a little bit of color or something. Uh, these are the uh, hum pots. All right, let's uh, let's get the wooden base saw on this thing. Okay, this is the bottom of the wooden base that I had made, and uh, these are little rubber, uh, kind of clear, you see, uh, pyramid shaped uh, feet that I'm going to put on the bottom of this thing to uh, so this thing's just not sitting on, uh, flat on the edge of a uh, cabinet. I get these little things at Lowe's or Home Depot, places like that. I'm going to cut these up and put them on. Okay, you can see I'll just uh, they they come kind of self-adhesive, sticky. Push them down on the corners really hard, and uh, these things will be ready. Let's go in and get this thing sitting on the uh, get the app on this thing. All right, we've got it in the wooden base now. As you can see, I had a walnut base made here and finished with a little groove cut, about a half inch up from the bottom, and you'll see why here in a minute. Um, thing drops down in here beautifully. Um, a vintage 1287 here that's matched, and then a pair of uh, 45 tubes. These um, these are some original um, kind of the leaf tubes with the uh, insignia still on. Extremely rare to find these like that. These were a new in the box set of these that came with this amplifier. It was one of the reasons I bought it was to get these tubes. I probably won't run these tubes all the time because. Uh, they're just so tough to find with these leaves on them like this. Um, and I've got lots of other 45s I'll end up uh, putting in here instead. But I wanted to kind of show you what I, what I bought and what it looked like originally and what it's turned out to look like now. I think it's amazing. Um, as soon as I get these um, silver screws swapped out, it'll look even better. And uh, hey, the good news is now it's functional. I, I have no idea how this thing was supposed to be working when I acquired it. You know, it was sold as a fully functional unit, and um, I just don't see how that was possible with all the uh, with all the broken solder joints, the uh, things that weren't connected well, the solder that was overflowing and touching ground in many cases. So I don't know. We're gonna uh, power this thing up and see how it sounds, though. Um, you can see I've got my uh, RCA cables here, um, our banana jack cables that feed up into the uh, the audio analyzer here, which then ultimately feed into the kind of the speaker uh, breakout switch that I've got here and dummy load, and then eventually make it up to the speakers. And the other side here, I've just got a set of RCA cables that goes down to a three and a half millimeter phono cable, which will go into my iPhone here shortly. And you can see the beautiful glow of the 45s. You can see the uh, the filament down inside these things heating up. Uh, 1287 filaments there and, and uh, the other 45 filaments here. Let me get the light on so you can actually see this thing. I just wanted to show you how beautiful this thing looked. Um, looked glowing. Alright, let's uh, let's get the phone going here. And, uh, and um, we'll play a little Shins, Young Pilgrims, great song. It's one of my go-to songs for testing out audio. It has a lot of different uh, ends of the spectrum in it, and, and I know it well, so uh, it helps me determine things uh, via listening as to uh, whether it's sounding like it should or shouldn't. Volume control is good and smooth, works well. Good morning, Jack. Good to see you. You like good music too, don't you? Alright, uh, now, now um, 
Got it working well. Sounds great. I'm going to take it over and uh, show you why I cut this little groove and got the base done like this. I was just digging through my box of 45 tubes here. I don't know. I probably got 50 of them or so. Um, various size shapes. A bunch of new old stock ones. Um, you know, the VT-52s are a really popular <laughs> old, um, what's a new old stock one? I've got some large, um, large bottle ones, kind of the small ST size. Um, we've got our, a variety of these types um, that we can certainly work with and uh, find something to go in here. Just so you know, the 245s here are the same as 45. It was just a military indicator back in the day. But um, we'll find something other than those uh, <laughs> highly collectible leaf tubes to, uh, to leave in this thing. You can see the whole setup here um, that I've kind of got going on. It's a uh, pretty neat little setup. Um, this is my bench top I have down here in my office. It's kind of an IKEA hack kit that I made out of some uh, oh, a, uh, expedite uh, setup for uh, storage shelves and then a uh, coffee table that you end up hacking and mounting on top of it. But Makes the perfect height here. It's about waist high, a little higher. As you can see, I've had these for a long time. These are amps that were built many years ago and uh, had similar walnut bases with the nice little groove down at the bottom on those things etched out along the way. This walnut turned out to be a little darker um, than this one did, and I'm not sure this one's actually walnut. Um, Maybe some kind of birch or something, but uh, they all look pretty good together. They all match up well with the old vintage um, AR turntable here. I'm a big fan of wood um, as it comes to stuff like this. So. But I will tell you, this thing is uh, its probably the most amazing uh, two and a half, three watts. Got a, uh, I used to modify these AR turntables a lot back in the day when you could find them decent, at decent prices. I put these uh, Lynn Basic Tone Arms on them and they are um, difficult to find these days. Uh, some kind of hardwood um, arm board on them. And then typically like I've got here the uh, Orthon uh, 2M Black on this thing and uh, it just uh, they're slick um, suspension turntables, as you can see, the whole thing just floats up and down here.
All right, we're going to call it a wrap. It really doesn't get much better than that. And I uh, love the little lamp here. It's the reason I picked it up. It had these uh, had these tubes in it new in the box uh, that came with it. I'm going to pull them out because they're highly collectible with these leaves still on them. You rarely ever see that. I'll put those up and uh, put something else in here. But we're going to you know, let this be our setup for a while. I, I like to swap stuff around a good bit from time to time. And... Uh, I'm buying stuff online and uh, may not be all you uh, all you bargained for when you got it and uh, sometimes it may need a little work but uh, you know just a uh, few hours of tender love and care and uh, a little bit of paint on these transformers this thing's looking great um, you can see over here um, on this one you know I've replaced the, kind of the black screws or whatnot probably do the same on this one when, uh, when those others come in the mail thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll keep making some videos. I'm um, hoping to be off this week of Thanksgiving and uh, maybe two weeks at Christmas. Maybe we can get caught up and uh, get some videos put out there for you. Oliver Nielsen sounds great, so we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks again, everybody.